All right, we're back. This is John. And it's Eric. And it's What If Geeks. And uh, we are Polis again. Uh, so, and we're Rayless. So Paul Polis Ray, Paul and Ray, Rayless? Paul, Polis and Rayless. Paul Rayless? <laughs> <laughs> Something, I don't know. All right, so anyway, uh, today is the 28th of January, and we are recording not our Geekly Weekly. We just did that. We are going to record this little article that uh, Eric sent me. It's basically... They released a uh, all the concept art from Colin Trevorrow's uh, version of Star Wars Episode Nine, so we thought it would be fun to kind of look over it and discuss what we see here and maybe compare it to what came out and what we think would have kind of worked better or whatever. Kind of play around with it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so it is. Uh, I, I guess it, it's worthwhile to start sort of at the beginning where the hell this came from because there was a script. Uh, not too long ago, that was leaked, and it was supposedly Colin Trevorrow's script. Um, yep. But he didn't say he was totally mum on it. He didn't say shit. And yeah. so, and if we go back kinda... a little bit further, I, when they first announced the new sequel trilogy, oh yeah, they told you okay, it was going to be yeah, that's true. Uh, JJ and then Ryan Johnson, and then Colin Trevorrow. If you need to go back further, Star Wars is his franchise. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so when Disney announced they were doing the new trilogy, it was going to be these three directors who were going to do it. And uh, Tavaro was the big name for episode nine. And then eventually got dropped off of there. Yeah, and he worked He worked on a script for quite a long time, uh, so many months. Uh, and then well, we didn't know this back then, but we know this now because he said as much. Um, he did submit a completed script for this film somebody leaked a bunch of concept art and they said oh well this was concept art for for trevorrow's film and uh a fan actually went on his twitter and you know posted a handful of the pictures from that leak and said you know fans we all deserve to know is this real or not and then finally after many many months of silence you know he said yes it's real uh, but I didn't kill R two D two, which was which was one of the things we'll right. get to when we get in this. But, yeah. Um, so he, he he kind of simultaneously confirmed the fan art as well as all the script stuff, which was which was more or less validated. The script was kind of validated <coughs> already. But I think what what what's been fun, what we've seen other people do, and we'll try to do here, is that people have put the script concepts together with the concept art. In order to like paint a picture of this is kind of how the movie would have played out. Yeah. And so we want to go through that and talk about how that movie might have played out. Yeah. And yeah, and this reminds me of like what I wanted to do earlier. So I still may do it. Or, uh, I was messing around with our website. I was looking at like our vlog area or blog areas, you know, and I'm thinking I want to still go back. Now that this whole uh, saga is over with, I want to go back and like do a discussion point on what I thought was going to happen with episodes and, you know, where I thought they were going to go, that kind of thing. Basically what we're going to do now. Yeah. Just with the whole thing. And then see who wants to comment and have a discussion about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm down. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so we we want to go through this. We're going to do this step by step in as best we can, the chronological order of how the movie roughly would have gone along with the images. And um, I will... Hopefully, before you hear this, I will have posted all the images and sort of the brief synopsis of the script onto the website, so you can follow along if you want while we're Yeah, talking. you can listen to us and follow along on the website. That'd be cool. Hopefully, I'll get to that. I'm making no promises. I will do it at some point, but it may, it may not be before this drops. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so if you haven't listened to all of our episodes, go back and listen to a couple <laughs> of the older ones, and then come back to this in about a month. We're starting over now with new sound. <laughs> it sounds um, much better. Anyway, so so the art was dropped. Who knew all you had to do was update a computer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the art was and dropped. Turn one fucking knob. The script was dropped and the art was dropped, and uh, here we are. We have we have a good picture of what Trevorrow's film would have been looked like, and and this is completely in the spirit of of what this podcast is, which is what if. Yep. And so, you know, taking this, what could have been, and comparing it against what happened, it's it's perfect for us. And that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. Now, does that first image come back up later on in that article? No. Okay. Can we talk about that first image? That first image is bad ass. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's start the very beginning, and then we'll get to that. It's the second thing, I swear. Okay. Um, His 
uh, script was supposedly called Duel of the Fates. That was going to be the name of the movie. Yeah, a little nod to episode one. Yep. And then he confirmed that that was indeed going to be the title of the movie. This thing starts off with... A shot of Ray dressed in black with a dual-bladed blue... A blue dual-bladed lightsaber a la uh, Darth Maul. Yep. But if you look really close, that looks like her staff. Yeah. Right? Which is what everybody speculated about her staff, right? That that was actually a lightsaber hilt or whatever, yep. blah, blah, blah. Um, which actually does turn out to be... Uh, uh, somewhat true, in yeah. Ri- rise, right? Um, Sorry, we... we- I, we, should we are going to spoil. We may rise. spoil the rise here. For what it's worth, we are talking about what would have been the ninth installment, and we're comparing yeah. it against the actual ninth installment. Yeah, so you're gonna we're spoil going to have the... lots of spoilers, and if you haven't seen it, you should yeah. probably stop. There's a bunch of people that have seen it already. If you listen to us, I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Um, if you haven't, all right, stop the podcast. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it does um, very much look like what everybody speculated would be. Her lightsaber, yeah. At some point, and if you actually, another thing I noticed in here is, look at her outfit. It's very reminiscent to Luke in, in Return, Return of, the Jedi. of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. She's got that dark outfit. It's a, um, I don't know. It's almost paying homage to the fact that that she's got some dark pole tendencies. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, not that she's embracing them, but I mean it's the same thing with Luke. Yeah, but very right? much like, like a, her first outfit l- yeah, reminded was, you well, of her first Luke. outfit was even more well. So so Luke's very first outfit before he ever becomes a Jedi. Yeah, while well, he's still on a, Tatooine, is a pure white outfit, which yes. is which is what she starts with on Jakku. Yes, and I'm talking even like material wise. Uh, yeah. the fabric looks similar. So and this looks similar to the fabric that he was wearing in Jedi. Mm-hmm. But even has like the little the little fold over part on right, it. Right, right, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff here that is very reminiscent of that, and um, yeah, just to take all the elements in. I mean, the double bladed saber was an obvious choice. I don't yes. know why they didn't go with that. I mean, I I, don't I, I know. guess to some extent I get the um, because she's going to become a Skywalker effectively. Um, sure. I, I get the using uh, Luke and Leia's blades kind of thing, but. True, for that point. Now, again, spoiler for the end of it, when you see her with the yellow blade, and it is part of her staff, yeah. you don't know that there's not another blade coming out of the other end of that thing. I suppose that's true. Because that is a pretty big hilt for what she's carrying. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I went there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I th- there's also part of me that thinks that a lot of them not doing this was like, Maybe not not to lay all the blame at Ryan Johnson's feet, but maybe it was a lot of a combination of him and whoever at Disney was agreeing with what he was doing, not giving the fans what they wanted. Because there was a lot of shit right there that they didn't do. I don't know. I, that the fans expected, and that would have been about the time you saw this double-bladed lightsaber first. She was an expert i guess we'll say with the staff she was good with the staff this would have made sense it was her weapon even when she was training and um luke is watching her in the last jedi she's using her staff as her like training implement because she doesn't have a saber yet i mean it's like it was too obvious i mean too obvious i don't mean that in the negative sense i mean it in like why the fuck didn't you do that right she yeah. should have had a double-bladed saber it was, I mean, that that's what she's comfortable with yeah. that's what everybody said yeah you're right and that is her i mean she walked around with it for who knows how long and if you're gonna pick a saber in the end it's gonna be one that you can operate like a staff come on yep. right now darth maul is crying into his horns yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm really sad they didn't do that. So that's one thing I want to say. But um, there's more to this this picture than that. Um, she is on the bridge of a Death Star. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. a bunch of dead stormtroopers around her, right? Yep. And so part of Trevorrow's, um, we're just going to call this Duel of Fates so I can stop saying Trevorrow because I know I'm going to mess it yeah. up. Part uh, of having, the Duel of the Fates. Part of the Duel of the Fates uh, thing was this was going to start um, in the Quat shipyards, which is where they built all the Death Stars. Um and then uh, Death Stars, sorry, uh, Star Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> Quad Drive Shipyard. So uh, that, that's where they build all the Star Destroyers. So they're going to start off there um, in his in his film. 
um, and they were trying to escape it, actually. I don't know why exactly. I probably need to go back and read more of the script, but um, that's where they are, and they're trying to escape it at the beginning of the movie. So this, her with the double-bladed saber, uh, potentially killing a bunch of uh, stormtroopers on the bridge of a Star Destroyer, is the opening scene we would have got. Right. Yeah. Which would have been badass. So Instead, we got Finn and Poe. <laughs> racing to do something. We got a lot of jumbled shit. That's what we got. Hyperspace skipping or, or light speed skipping. Light speed, yeah, there was a lot, yeah. There was a lot of... And they weren't even light speed skipping between old planets you'd recognize. They were just light speed skipping to random places while TIE fighters followed them. Yeah. <sighs> Through hyperspace. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, <laughs> the next the next uh, picture we get hey, maybe somewhere in this write up Trevaro explains how <laughs> tie fighters can go to... <laughs> the, uh, probably not. The next image we have uh shows Coruscant actually um and it's occupied by the first order. <laughs> and there's a huge um one of the ships from um Independence Day. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does kind of look like that, yeah. <laughs> So it's the it's the first order capital ship though, which is a massive. I uh, I don't know I don't even know what the hell it is. And this concept art, mind you, so this is before they had designed the other stuff. If you look really close here in the bottom right corner, you can see um, Jeff Goldblum and uh, Mac, <laughs> a MacBook. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's getting ready to fly right up the asshole of that ship, huh? Uh, so anyway, the, you got this massive uh, First Order capital ship, and it's just yeah. sort of looming over Coruscant. So there's something of an occupation here. Um, and I think uh, you've only really seen up. it briefly throughout. Yeah, you really haven't got a bunch of Coruscant. There's there's, no. there's scenes here and there, but yeah. No, and I know in the what I guess is now Legends, it was touched on a little bit more where basically you've got like the upper city that you see there, and then you have like way below the atmosphere – the underworld. There's, there's the underworld. Yeah, the underworld, that, yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be touched on in this script, actually. Yeah, see? So it'll be uh, good. So um, next thing we have is actually, uh, it's a picture of a big crowd gathered around what looks like a Star Wars-style guillotine. It's like, it's a guillotine, pretty much. Oh, it is. Um, but it has a laser instead of a blade yeah. across the, the top. And then um, there's very clearly a rebel, uh, rebel uh, pilot yes. about to get beheaded. Which we know from the script thing that that is his name is Biskova and he was some sort of traitor that helped the helped the resistance steal uh, something from Kuat shipyards. I don't remember. What sure, that was, but plans. Uh, and then and then to his left, you see what almost looks like Captain Phasma. It does, yes. And I'm not sure how or why. I mean, maybe it's just another Chrome Trooper, but is the helmet damaged but, but in this? The, I can't yes. even tell. Uh, yeah, I zoomed in and yes, it looks the like damage it's damaged. right where uh, it would have corresponded with the shot of her right before she supposedly dies in Last Jedi where you see her eye. Yeah, okay. So, so like uh, Rose Tico and like uh, Beaumont Ken, um Captain Phasma was a wasted character in in, the, in this. She was trilogy. very much the Boba Fett of this trilogy. It Where, if you think about it, like because Boba Fett had this big, like, oh my god, look who it is! Uh, he yeah. looks great, and he really didn't do shit in those <laughs> movies. Yeah, he's got an he, amazing following. He gets and he's, beaten his... on accident. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Boba Fett, where? <laughs> Funk. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, execution though would be something very new for Star Wars, right? Uh, to, to to do like a public beheading kind of thing, it's it's very dark for Star Wars. It would be. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I mean, you know, the Ewoks got, were going to cook everybody, eat them. Yeah, and they didn't. Now they didn't actually show, <laughs> but they also did play the drums on those stormtrooper helmets. And That's I don't true. know where you think that meat for that party came from. Yeah, but mm, you know. <laughs> uh, and in the actual spoiler alert version of episode nine the traitor or spy whatever mm -hmm. that finn and poe talked to that i told you guys eh, that was actually voiced by mark hamill yeah the very next scene you see is uh kylo ren dragging that guy's head and throwing it on the floor in front of everybody oh yeah like, that's look right. what the fuck i did so okay maybe not you know you know i uh, now that you mentioned that and i'm thinking about all these images there may have been borrowed themes from this script 
Not, sure. not the same thing, but... But close, yeah. Because yeah. when you see that, so instead of seeing a guillotine, you just see the dude's head afterwards, you know? Yeah. It, it's worth noting that Phasma is not mentioned at all in the script. So maybe it wasn't her, maybe it's just a random character, but... Um, <laughs> Some asshole found her helmet. Who knows? I mean, this this wasn't a finalized script either. I mean, it was a it was a complete story, Maybe I the guess, same monkey fixed our helmet. But it didn't get the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it didn't get the time to go through uh, sort of the, the regular editorial yeah, Nothing, process. nothing. On dark moments, I mean, Anakin did wipe out a whole bunch of fucking kids. You, you, didn't, you didn't see it, though. And I mean, they're, they're showing you yeah, a beheading okay, here. Okay, okay. A New Hope, the very first fucking movie from the 70s. There's Uncle Owen, Aunt Peru, charbroiled in front of their fucking oh, house. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> And, but you still you forgot to blow out your marshmallow, Luke. You still don't see it happen, though. Like it's it's only it's only inferred that that all happened, and you see the before and after. Okay, fine. you know what I mean. I'll give you that. I don't think Disney would have wanted that particular scene in. No, here. they probably would have done like a Game would've... of Thrones, Ned Stark, yeah. where like you see the sword, yeah. you see the laser down. go down, but you never see the head drop, and yeah. it cuts away to a different scene. And yeah, maybe some kid in the audience like. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing we see is a floating ray, uh, like a levitating ray, meditating. What? Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like these words don't go together. But so now anyway, look at that picture, though. It looks like she's carrying a yellow lightsaber there. Yeah, it does right? look like that. I'm not sure what's going on there, to be honest. <laughs> well, she's floating. And, well, that and, much. and and Luke is in the picture. If you notice, off he to is. the right side, he's standing there watching her. I'm not yes. sure purpose well, of this is. Well, but they're talking about how. She was going to be training. You were going to see more of her training under him, even though he was a force ghost. He was still going to be there training her. Okay, so because he was that powerful, that would, that would make be. sense. But uh, I think the script would have been written before he knew that Luke was dead, which makes more sense because I don't think Luke was supposed to die. Yeah, when um, they first started talking about this shit, I don't think he was supposed to die at the end of Last Jedi. Yeah, just so talking just about another fuck you for Ryan Johnson. Yeah, pretty much talking about echoed scenes again. I mean, she obviously floats and meditates in the Last Jedi, so mm-hmm. uh, not the Last Jedi, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yes. So they they did, they did use this in a sense, sure, but yeah. but in a different way. It's a, it's happening in a different place, and there's other stuff going on. But so she's she's training under Luke Skywalker, not not under Leia. Right. And um, I think this also would have been written. Either prior around to or p- shortly prior to Carrie's death. Yeah, I think it was because he left the project in 2017, and you have to assume if he finished a script that it was many, many months prior to that. I six think months, it was before she died. She died what, right as Last Jedi came out. I think it was before that. Was it right as Last? It was Jedi? right before well, so they, Last no, they Jedi had, came they, out. They had yeah, because they had Last Jedi uh, scenes that they because got to everybody use wondered in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, Force Awakens and Last Jedi scenes. Because everybody wondered if they were just going to kill her off in Last Jedi because she was dead. December 27th, 2016. So it would have been a year before. She died a full year before Last Jedi A full year before out? TLJ was put in theaters. Wow. It doesn't really matter for the speculation point anyway, but whether she was dead or not, it really doesn't make a difference because Trevorrow's script had Luke, Luke training her, yeah. doing the training, right? So... Um, there I just, was, yeah, I there was still no, don't think he was supposed to be dead. Yeah, okay. there was no, there was no Leia is a Jedi timeline in this thing though. That is not. No, I think they've always touched on like she was training with Luke. She was force sensitive, but more of the empathic kind of stuff. Like I know from the old books, she was like that where she would train, but she was always stronger in the mind ish, like reading people and that kind. Yeah, of, you know. well, I. I, I, I I've said this in the in the Star Wars review and, and on our podcast and the one I wrote on the website. I don't have any issue with her being a Jedi. I, no. I think that's perfectly fine to do it that way. Hi. Oh, what After is this? these messages, we'll be right back. What kind of music we got going here? What the fuck is going on with your computer? I don't know. Nothing now. <laughs> I'd love to say we'll cut that out, but that was too funny. <laughs> Eric's computer just got possessed by my mother-in-law or something. No, I have I Star Wars Newsnet open. I think it was just an advertisement in the corner. I don't know why it just started to play. You know, what are we, what are we 20 some minutes into this recording? Yeah. 21 I don't know why it just decided to play all of a sudden. Well, my house is haunted. 
So ah, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Okay, so uh, ne- next picture we get is uh, what the hell is this guy's name? Torvalum. So there's this this really ancient, weird, evil, precarious looking fellow with like six eyes and a funny shaped head. Uh, it was my understanding that he is supposed to be the Sith. That trained Palpatine to some degree and his predecessor, some shit like that. So he's like this guy that's been around for like six hundred years, or I'm so he trained up, but... Sidious and Plagueis. Yeah, but but he's something like Yoda in, in the sense oh, that he's, he's a like Sith version of Yoda. Yeah, but he's like exiled himself, and he has not not exiled, but he's focused on his own shit, and he doesn't care about all this other crap that's happening. That's why. There's no rule of two applying here or whatever. It's just, but well, the rule of two has always been a little vague. Well, it has. It has. If you look, if you watch the cartoons, you watch this and that, whatever. You know, Dooku kind of has an apprentice here, and so and so's got an apprentice there, and in the comics, Vader's got an apprentice somewhere, and in a video game, he's got another apprentice. So there's always, yeah, there's an an official two, but there's always. Room for maneuvering there. I mean, if this guy is really several hundred years old, probably doesn't give a shit. But but even if that wasn't the case, I mean, it, it, I guess I could make some sense out of he's just sort of self exiled to yeah. to you know work on you know manipulating the dark side, whatever he's doing. Who knows? Uh, we don't have any idea. Um, and he wasn't going to be a villain, for what it's worth. He's not like the villain in the show. Uh, he just understands the Kylo dark Ren side. is the villain, right. actually, in this in this version. He just knows the dark side. Knows, yeah, yeah. And and he um, he speaks to Kylo Ren at some point in this. Um, and the main thing is that he teaches, I guess, Kylo um, how to drain the life force from a living being. Using Which would be the opposite of what you see later. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, so that that's what he's there for. Now, I still take some issue with this. Um, given that all the Sith that we know from the beginning, even from EU, it doesn't even really matter. They're all like very um, self-absorbed, and they're worried about someone else having as much power as them. Yeah. So to think that there would be a Sith that would just be hanging around for several hundred years while uh, Darth Plagueis and 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 uh, uh, Darth Sidious, Sidious and, yeah. and maybe even Vader they all just built up their power. It's kind of not believable, but at the same time I get what they're going for. Like you got to have Kylo has to have some con- Snow if Snoke is dead, Kylo has to have some connection to like a deeper. Yes, part of yeah. the Sith in order to like. Well, you got to realize sort of like, everything in Star in Wars is kind of like Swiss cheese. If you hold it a certain <laughs> way, it looks like a solid piece of cheese. <laughs> but if you tilt it any way in, the, in any direction, you see a lot of holes. Yeah, uh, that's you know, fair. She's kind of. That's fair. But that to me that goes with a lot of fandom in any series. Star Wars is just a little bit more because there's so much fandom. You just you have to be able to gloss over some things. You just have to be able to. Because it it can't all fit. It's fun when you can make it, even if it's just in your own head canon. Oh, this is because of this, whatever. Yeah. Okay. It's fun that way, but it doesn't always work. So you just kind of have to like, eh, all right, well, you know. I just I, I get that Kylo has to have something. He has to have someone that can sort of finish his training. Yeah. Well, because that was a big thing going into even Last Jedi was that we thought you were going to see. More Sith training, mm-hmm. like you've seen Jedi training for 30 fucking years. And you never really did. No. So then we get uh, another scene um, of Coruscant again. But this time it's like the Coruscant underground because they're trying uh, – C-3PO, R2-D2, uh, Finn, and Rose are all trying to get to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant without being caught by the First Order. Right. What they realize while they're going through this is that – the First Order has turned Coruscant, basically uh, the people of Coruscant, particularly people that are less wealthy, um, into like scavengers where they're all like after their next meal and somebody's willing to kill somebody or whatever, right? And so it sort of sets a tone for how n- – not how oppressive the First Order is because it's definitely a theme, but how much it's affected everything else, everything yeah. else 
Which actually the lower levels of Coruscant in the Legends, that's exactly how it was. It was kind of cool. All right, next. A shot of Kylo fighting Darth Vader. Okay, and so <laughs> the way this is is that this don't mind him and his eyes. I'm um, chewing on eyes. Sorry, <laughs> um, you're good. Kylo is doing basically what Luke did when he went through his Jedi cave, training, but yeah. he's doing it on the Sith side of it, right? And so right. Torvalum sets up a vision, I guess, uh, where Kylo has to confront Darth Vader, and it's a battle that he ultimately loses, but it's a dream sequence. Right. But unlike, you know, so so Luke kills Vader in that sequence yes. and cuts his head off and sees his own face there. Yes. And so he, he won that battle, but it gave him a realization of sort what of he could what become. he could become if right. he wasn't careful. And so that sent him on a different path. And this was supposed to be the opposite where Kylo actually kills Vader and realizes, I guess somewhere along the way, you know, realizes that following exactly in his grandfather's footsteps isn't what he needed to do, but he could take his own path and, you know, secure power for himself. Right. And this is where Kylo becomes essentially the real villain in this story. It's the point where he's like, fuck it, I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. I'm about me now. Right. <laughs> you know, so that, Let that's... Let the past die. Yeah, that that's the... Well, and he said that, and, and so I guess that flows with what he said. Um, sure. But, you know, this isn't about Rey anymore. Rey isn't involved in this. This is him really, truly turning to the dark side and becoming that self-concerned, power-hungry... Sith, sure. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. The next thing we get is yet another city shot. Um, this one is a lot different because it's a different planet. Poe, Chewie, BB-8 are going to help Rey try to figure out her Jedi path, I guess. Sure. Um, and so in this storyline, Poe actually lived on this planet, which is called uh, Bonadon, I think. Okay. It is a new planet, but this is where he came from. He's not a smuggler in this storyline or anything like he doesn't have any criminal past. Right. Yeah, he lived there with his grandfather. Yeah. So now does that mean that whatever you heard about Luke dealing with Poe's parents within the comics was going to be I'm not sure. Yeah. It's yeah I'm weird. not sure. It's not really spelled because out. Because that's in the canon comics now, Luke dealing with Poe's parents. So maybe that was kind of it could be. I, I maybe, maybe there was some cross yeah, there that yeah, they didn't there could really be. touch. I don't, it just depends on how the story plays out. I, yeah. mean, I suppose he could have been with his grandfather because his parents were well, fighting we're resistance yeah. and, and and didn't want to you know risk their child or something. Uh, I don't know, though. I, don't know. I really don't know. Back to the Jedi Temple where C-3PO and them are. They finally get to the Jedi Temple, and what they're trying to do is basically put up a light side beacon right it's it's a message from leia which is calling the galaxy for aid again a theme that we saw in rise, rise. of skywalker yep. but it played out in a completely different way i mean it was yeah. it was poe giving the speech about you know people will come if we give them leadership this is completely right. different this is there's a message from leia um, it's going to go out all across yeah, the galaxy all across the yeah. so 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 we we see two things that were sort of borrowed from this so the message across the galaxy, but it was Palpatine's in Rise, yep. not not the one from the Resistance. Yeah. And then, of course, the call to arms for the well, Resistance. Well, Leia did send a message across the galaxy. Yeah. She just sent it right to Ben. So th there are borrowed themes here, but it, but it is quite a bit different. On Bonadon, um, the Knights of Ren are chasing Rey and Poe, um, and they take to the water in a razor sail or something? Sure. Uh, but anyway, this like th it. this is our first chase sequence, at least as far as we know, in this in this little script. Uh, as opposed to our eighth <laughs> picture lineup, yeah. yeah. There's no light speed skipping uh, or anything like that going on. But ultimately, the 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 point of this, the the big difference here is that the Knights of Ren played virtually no role in Rise, and everybody wanted to know what they were about, where they came from, where is the backstory. Yeah, we'll get more into it in my blog slash vlog or whatever, but I really thought they were going to play more into fucking Last Jedi, never mind this. I thought they were going to really play into the rest of the trilogy. Yeah, I missed opportunity, I think. But they were going to, in, in Trevorrow's script, they were going to try to include them in here, and it was going to end up actually, it was going to culminate, this chase was going to culminate in a fight between Rey and the Knights, hmm. which she would presumably win. Which people would marry Sue, you know, they'd scream Mary Sue all day for that. But. Yeah, I'm so tired of that shit. 
<laughs> but you know, I think that's that's a better way to do it. What what I don't see in this script and what we haven't seen at all in any of it. What the fuck are these guys about? They almost need a show of their own. I, I almost wish Disney would do a show about the Knights of Ren. <laughs> You know, not a bad I'm idea. I'm so curious at this point. Not a bad idea. You go back and you do get an Adam Driver look like so that he's younger, or just get Adam Driver and de age him a little bit, whatever. Show the destruction of the temple and the rise of the Knights of Ren. Because I'm convinced that at least part of those knights were some of the old Jedi that Luke was training along with Ben. Gotta be. Back on Coruscant, Finn and crew. 3, 3PO, R2, D2, and Rose Tico. They're actually, well, mostly Finn, inspires an uprising for all the underground people that are sort of oppressed by the First Order. And right, and so they've convinced them that they need to fight the First Order. And what they have underground and what we see in these uh, leaked images is that they've got old ATSTs and and uh, those gorilla walkers. What the hell are they called? They've got like a bunch of this old. Uh, you had the ATSTs and you had ADATs. ADATs, and there's the other one, the gorilla, the gorilla-looking ones. I forget. I don't remember what they're called. So anyway, they've got some. They've got a bunch of old Imperial equipment and a little bit maybe of old First Order equipment. I'm not sure, but and the underground, but they're not really using it. So I, I guess the point is that they're, they're all gonna, fucked up looking too. They're going to outfit this stuff to sort of fight back against uh, fight back against the First Order's occupation of Coruscant. And so it's Finn that inspires them. He sort of leads the so, – so now you get a resistance inside of a resistance, right? Like a rebel uprising on Coruscant uh, that's led by Finn. It's not purely the resistance against the First Order, but it's just people being oppressed and, and finally agreeing to fight back under leadership. Now, you want to talk about a different character arc for Finn? Holy shit. I mean to yeah. lead like a, a uprising on a planet? Mm-hmm. Against against an impressive government, that's like a whole nother fucking storyline for him, and to have that, Ro- that would and nice. to have Rose Tico there with him in support of that. Sure, I mean it lends I, to that storyline they started better. Yes, okay, there I agree with you. Um, just the entire Rose Tico character in and of herself. I said it before. I got more out of her sister before she died in the first three minutes of the fucking movie than I did her. Sorry, I mean just I did. I'm not saying. <laughs> you know. well, I, I didn't get much out of her character. I just they started something with they it. They could have done. They a lot, started. Yes. A, they started a Finn and Rose sort of. It doesn't have to be a, a romantic yeah. relationship, right. but, but, but they a connection started a between bond. the two. Yeah. Yes, they absolutely started a bond there, and then it was almost like overcompensation in Rise, where they kind of like shoved her off to the side. On a mission, like, yeah. oh, she's not here because she's over here. Yeah. And like, and she even says as much, like, I'm going to be over here to do this. So that explains why she's not there, because fans really didn't like her. But that was overcompensation. Much like, you know, the overreaction of some you know, toxic fandom that went after the actress on social media. That was stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of dumb shit. But, again, Star Wars is one of those things where I always say the... It's an amazing saga and it's an amazing universe, but the fandom is so fucking crazy. It they are because remember we all hated the prequels too. No, yeah. So uh, until the sequel trilogy came out, man. And now we all hate these, and we kind of like the the tril- the prequels. So, uh, we we hardly have time to sidestep here, but I'm going to do it anyway because I started writing an article about two weeks ago about this. Is it going on on the website? I, that's the plan. I just okay. it's taken me forever to write it, and I feel like. No matter what I say, I'm going to alienate like a third of the fandom with it. Welcome because, to my world. Yeah. <laughs> the premise of it started as it's okay to critique Star Wars. That was the premise of what I started writing. But then when I when I actually started putting the words to, to paper, right, and I was thinking like – I was trying to think why, why are people so combative and, and everything in this franchise? And I started writing about that and then I realized – Oh shit, you know what? This fandom spans like three different generations at least, right? Completely different time periods from 77 to to w- w- when did the uh, sequel trilogy start? 2015? 2015? Yeah. 20 yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, so I mean completely different time periods. Uh the movies are completely different and then there were these huge like 
bifurcation moments, right? That that weren't the fault of the movies alone, but other things that happened. So like you had all this EU stuff and people followed all these EU uh, uh, books and everything, right? Oh yeah, I did. Exactly, exactly. And so there was already a bifurcation there and people that sort of liked the movie, original trilogy movies, and then the people that went on to read the books and they had all these other things to say. And the people that liked the original trilogy were like, okay, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so that was a gentle one though, right? And then then you had the release of the prequel trilogies, right? And then at that point, Lucas had done sort of a, a new thing. It was still it was still space opera feel. It was still space western, but it was different. Mm-hmm. And and then you had this new bifurcation that happened, right? Oh shit! Now we got people that like the prequel trilogy and people that say if you like the prequel trilogy, you should die in your sleep. You know, <laughs> right? And, yes. and then this yes. whole thing happened, and then, and then those people started yes. fighting, and then the Disney buyout happened, right? Yep. And then that had two parts: one, Disney buying it out. And so there was this faction of people that said, Disney can't do anything good with Star Wars. It's ruined. Right. And then there was other people that said, it's fine. You know, Disney is, you know, they're going to make new stuff. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually affect the old stuff. If you like the old stuff, continue liking it. You know? Yeah, which is where no I felt. big yeah. deal. Mm-hmm. But, then, but then something happened. Uh, Disney said, well, you know all that EU stuff? Yeah, that's that didn't now. happen. That yeah. didn't happen. We're gonna make up our own stories, and then all of a sudden there was this huge chunk of the fandom that was like, "Okay, fuck you, Disney." <laughs> like I've invested years of my life, and, I'm and, not gonna and lie. hundreds of I, my dollars into yeah. buying and reading this shit. There was part of me that felt that way, but I was like, I get what they're trying to do, so I wasn't really that mad about it. But, I mean, but some of it's even worse. For some people, it's even worse than that. It's like you've committed. Uh, hundreds of storylines to memory yeah and and you can't even hardly tell anymore what was canon and what what is now not canon anymore right like you don't know the distinction and i understand that why that would make people mad and then oh no i do too but it's just like it is what it is. I mean, it's the nature of the beast. You, well, it you is the nature out, of the beast. But, and, and, but you have to be able to kind of compartmentalize it. It's just, it is, it's hard because I read them all. Yeah. And so, so again, and there was a lot of good shit in there that you were like, fuck. So this is another moment of bifurcation. Did you read all the EU shit and you want to continue to believe that that was part of the story because you were invested in it? Or do you not give a shit? Right. And there was another bifurcation. And then the last one happened, the sequel trilogy. And there was the yes. sequel trilogy is all about modern problems, uh, woman empowerment, Mary Sue. You had that whole crowd and you had people that say, fuck, I needed something Star Wars. Thank God somebody's putting something out. And, and this fast too, right? Because Disney did a whole trilogy in six years. Yeah. Uh, just like the original was done in, in six years. But mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, this is better. And I don't mean storyline wise, but I just mean... The sort of level of production with uh, special effects and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, way bigger, took the exact same amount of time to do a whole trilogy. Yeah. All right. Whereas the prequel trilogy took a little bit longer. But um, so then again, you got another bifurcation there now. People that say there are people. This is toxic fandom, of course, but there are people that say the sequel trilogy ruined Star Wars for me, and I don't get that. Like, okay, so three movies. That you don't even want to acknowledge somehow ruined the shit that you used to like? How? Yeah. <laughs> so, Do you not it, still like it? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing. Um, two things that I heard said that I agree with 100% and would sit there in the back of my mind until I heard him said. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. One, uh, Star Wars has always been made for 12-year-olds. That's who the target market is. So... Of course, when you get into these, what do you call them, bifurcations? Yeah, bifurcations. Right? Yeah. It's the people that are against it are the fans that grew up and are not 12 anymore. Mm-hmm. They want what was, and it's still being made for a 12-year-old. So you're in a different mindset. So I get that. The second thing I heard that made a whole lot of sense, especially as a Giants fan, if you look at Star Wars as your home team, Good or bad, you root for the home team to do good. 
Yeah, even if they all right, they, they fucked up this game, they fucked up that game, whatever. Yeah, you're still cheering on the whole team. Yeah, you know, you want your team to win. So overall, Star Wars, you want to succeed. You know, you still cheer for them. All right, I, did I agree with everything that's been done? No. Was I very vocal about Last Jedi? Yep. <laughs> you know, that would be like some of the seasons that really sucked for my Giants. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? But I also said, yeah, I went back and watched it a second, third time. And while I don't hate it as much, I still really dislike it. But whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, yeah. 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 Same boat. Try to rewatch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So while I get the arguments against them, you, to say that it ruins it for you. Well, don't, don't you have a lot more to worry about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and this can, is this can... is a podcast dedicated to geek shit. And yeah. I'm still saying, don't you have more to worry about? I mean, it can it can ruin the sequel trilogy for you, and you sure. can, you can have that, have it. But to say that it somehow retroactively ruined, the entire ruined saga, you know, the OT or the or what the whole how? saga? How did how is that possible? If you don't want to acknowledge the sequel trilogy, don't. If you don't want to talk about it with people, don't. If you want to tell people it's garbage, do it. It doesn't have to ruin what you loved about Star Wars. It's silly. <coughs> it makes no sense. Listen, you bunch of assholes. I watched the <laughs> holiday special and both Ewok movies and the droids cartoon. Fuck you. <laughs> this well, stuff is not all good. Yeah, and that's the funny <laughs> part about this is like people point out plot holes and stuff, and that's fine. And I, I did it when I did the review. I, I said there's these plot holes here that are kind of weird, yep. but I still gave an overall positive review of the movie, yeah. despite the plot holes, because I, I like the way they ended it. But anyway, you know, those plot holes always existed. They, they were in yeah. previous stuff. They've always been around. Yeah, You're just either ignoring them or you forgot. Yeah, yeah. like I said, like that slice of Swiss cheese. Turn it <laughs> yeah. a certain way. Well, people are only looking at it from one angle. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of truth to that. So um, this is where do you where do you get to in the end, though, is is my problem with finishing this article. Right. Because what I want to say to people is it's OK if people want to talk shit about the sequel trilogy. It's OK if they want to talk shit about the prequel trilogy. It's OK if they want to say, you know what? Legends isn't canon. Sorry you read all those books. Right. All that shit is fine. You know, but there's a point where you you go past that. Uh, gently confrontational nature that you would expect from people and you go to a whole other thing where like, we, you know people are like oh you like what you like The Last Jedi oh fuck you you don't know shit about this franchise right, right? and it's like it's too much it's too much let them like it let them like it right. debate with them on why it's shit debate with like them on why something else Disney is better Noah when he was like three and Somebody standing next to me that I did not know, right? We were watching a Star Wars show, whatever, up on the stage. And Noah was cheering because he was just getting into Star Wars. And the guy next to me was like, he looked over, he laughed. Cause he was like, he's just getting into it? I said, yeah. I said, he's really loving it now. And he's like, you're never going to show him the prequels, right? <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> this is my kid, right? Because he was like, you know, he's basically like, he's, you're going to be a good dad and not show him the prequels, right? Like, how about how about if I'm a good dad to whom I beat your ass in the middle of Disney? <laughs> Fucking, you know, <laughs> like, people assume a lot, you, yeah. know, well, you, know? you know? And 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 there's a meme running around along those lines too. Uh, I forget what it says exactly, but it's like a, it's like a dad and a kid sitting on a couch or whatever. And the kid says, are there any more movies? And then the dad's like, Nope, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it doesn't, it doesn't specify which movies he's talking about, but it's just, right. it could, it could fill, it could fill any gap. Right. Sure. They could have just finished the OT and he could be like, that's it. That's they it. could have just finished the PT. He could have been like, Nope, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they could have just watched, uh, they could have just watched solo or rogue one. And he'd be like, Nope, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and again, all those, so everything that anybody had a problem with, with any of those, I, Found plenty to enjoy, so whatever. All right, we really tangent on that one. Yeah, that's okay. We're, um, we'll stick with it. We'll, I will cut it out and make it a. a nah, it's okay. <laughs> well, we'll just—it's a Star Wars discussion. We'll just—not like we're not going to have like seventeen of them in the next two right, weeks. Fair enough. But I, I think uh, uh, last thing I'll say. And we'll but get for the... your article, if you want, if you're having issues, 
kind of sorting it all out, maybe we can just jump back into what we did with uh, the Star Wars land, and I can jump in and we can write it together. Well, that'll be fun. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. I've already written a lot, so we could just turn yeah, it into an exchange. Yeah. Um, last thing I want to say, though, uh, because you just put this in my head and I hadn't really thought about it. Until, until you did it. No, no, it's okay. Actually, it may actually help me sort of finish this out. But um, you talk about sports fans. Yep. And when your team loses, they could lose 50. So, so, so I was a Cubs fan. Oof. I was a Cubs fan yeah. my whole life. And it took them 108 years to win another <laughs> World Series, right? But I never stopped rooting Longer for them. Longer than you were alive. I never stopped rooting for them. And they, and they <coughs> yeah, had terrible too. They had terrible seasons. Um there are points where I should have walked away and I should have said, uh, you know what? The Cubs have ruined baseball. Fuck this. But. But you don't do that, right? And essentially, if you've got, if you've got Mando a, finding Baby Yoda was your <laughs> last World Series yeah. for the Cubs, right? <laughs> you know, the, fu- the funny part is, uh, the funny part is I have not watched a single Cubs game since the World Series. <laughs> because there's, there's, no, there's no other high that you'll find beyond that. I, I stayed yeah, up so no. late that night i was listening to the uh i was listening to the police scanner like people climbing light poles and shit i was just like oh, yeah, having yeah. a grand old time i was posting on my i Facebook. was rooting for you guys because i one i mean heather and her family they're all you know most of them are cubs fans um I, i'm a yankees fan so you know i we had our dynasty for a while whatever it goes up and down uh congratulations to jita for being uh lumped into the hall of fame now uh, I don't think that's a proper term, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, so I was for that year, yeah, and especially, come on, I mean, it's the Cubbies. You gotta go for them. You die. You stupid if you're not rooting for them. These guys are dying to get there. They make it. It was great, right? My point of all that is just that you're right. You, you keep rooting for your your home team or whatever your chosen team, even when they do shitty, even yeah. when they pick bad players, and and you could you could make this. Again, you just put this in my head. I hadn't thought it out really, but you could put this into a perfect analogy for this. But even when they they pick bad players in in a, in a draft or whatever, you don't give up on the team, right? Right. You say that's a bad year. Fuck that. I'm not even watching it the rest of this year. And you could do that with the sequel trilogy. You could say not watching it anymore. You could say bad player, that guy that played Anakin Skywalker. Worst actor in history, not dealing with him, and right, it's just like a sports team when they when they when they when they bring somebody in you don't like, and you're like fuck that guy, you yeah. know. Yep. And again, you can give up on your team for that season, whatever. Not give up on them, but hey, stop watching. Yeah, just, you know, I don't care mad. that much yeah. next time around. You're gonna hold that grudge for a bit. Why can't we do that with Star Wars? Why can't people do that with Star Wars? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I Star Wars have, fans are fucking. Out you of have minds. a perfect analogy of nothing... why it shouldn't be this way. Right. Thank you. And there is nothing like this fandom. I've seen amazing things happen out of this fandom, but oh my god. It's almost like, again, it's got to be yin for yang. As great <laughs> as the fandom can be, holy shit, these people are fucked up. And that's coming from one of you, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Because we're way beyond... We turned this into something. Yeah. <laughs> what I tell you? I'll We're tell like, you, yeah, this... we can probably get a short episode out of this. this, and I, this... I told you, when it comes to the geeks, every time you and I get together and talk, we're just talking. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Which is probably why our wives just roll their eyes at us. Probably. All right, so uh, back to the episode at hand. Holy shit, only a 15-minute tangent. Um, so the next thing we see is Ray with her <coughs> double-bladed blue saber and her black outfit. Uh, getting ready to fight this epically large creature. It's it's, it's the Rancor's <laughs> inbred cousin. <laughs> it's something reminiscent to the Rancor, but it, I mean, it's easily it must be five times bigger than that thing. Uh, it's gigantic. No, no, right? no, 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 no. If you, you look so? at it, no, because if you look at it, you, well, it might be a little bit bigger than the Rancor. But if you think about how the Rancor picked Luke up in one hand and was getting ready to eat him, and he showed that bone in his mouth, right? Eh, yeah, he might be a little bit bigger. He's like his bigger brother. All right, but yeah, so, but it does look very similar to again nods to yes the but, OT but better nods than the nods we got I think yeah because the nods we got were in large part just a copy paste <laughs> yeah 
and these are like uh, again, this is this is just concept art. It's a draft script. I don't want to say like this is how the movie would have been. The nods we got was literally Return of the Jedi. Watch your friends die. Wait, it, what the fuck was? That? Yeah, you just did that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it was it was it was a little more blatant in what we got, but I, I do like the concepts that they put forward here. And now we're gonna get into something that is extending across the franchise, not just copying from the OT. Because this creature that she's fighting is apparently supposed to be outside of the forest of Mortis. Mortis, yes. Right? And so you know where that leads if you've watched Clone Wars, if you've listened to our, us talk about it. Uh, we've talked about the Mortis dagger, yep. uh, the father, the son, the daughter. <coughs> um, mm-hmm. There's a whole uh, deeper Which is what we thought the dagger yeah, that she had yep. in the trailer was going to be and not that... Goonies compass. Exactly. Okay. And so there, there's a, oh shit, you just reminded me of something. But that's all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Nope, 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 nope. Leave it alone. Um, <laughs> the fucking podcast is completely off the rails every time. It, it starts off off the rails. You know that, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> We're just not off the rails. You, you know what I was going to say? I, this is totally off topic. It belonged in the last episode, and I forgot about it, and I didn't put it on the script. Um, the Goonies is on Amazon Prime. You can watch Goonies on Amazon Prime. Nice. So you nice. should watch it. Goonies all, never say die. That's all I'm going to say. And that's so Star Wars related because the fucking dagger is the same thing as the emblem from Goonies. So there's your connection. <laughs> anyway... Um. Um, so outside of Mortis, and so Mo- Finn Love Ray. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh wow. <laughs> so uh, the, the Mortis storyline is sort of a, a a deep dive into what dark side and light side really is. Uh, it was multiple episodes of this metaphor of the dark side and the light side, and this sort of other plane where they're connected, and uh, the father represents. Basically, the force keeping balance, and he wanted the chosen one, which was Anakin, to take his place. Right, and, and that 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 place is maintaining the balance between the dark and the light, which were represented in the episode by the, the daughter, daughter and the yeah. son. Yeah, and the daughter being the light and the son being the dark. And um, in case you haven't watched it, I just won't ruin it for you. But it is a good storyline. Watch the animated series; they're really yeah. cool. And. The final season of Clone Wars coming out. So come on. So get caught up. But but the reason I think that it's a good storyline I forget if you like animated stuff, because I don't even like animated stuff that much to be honest, but the way that they've sort of connected the, the, the bigger struggle of light versus dark into this um almost religious hierarchy thing where there's you know, there's a person like keeping the balance between the bad things and the good things sure, and sure. Uh, it was a good way to do it, and it brought the it brought the dark and light side of the force conflict to a ethereal level. Uh, right. I don't know. It's really cool. So uh, apparently, we, we would have gotten that in Trevorrow's at least suggestions of that in Trevorrow's script. So um, <coughs> yeah, he was going to touch on all that shit. Yeah. So um, back to Coruscant. Um, First Order stormtroopers are getting ready to face off with. Uh, Finn and Tico's uprising of uh, I don't know bums in the street, uh, but they yeah, have ATSCs. Yeah, what the fuck did they do to these ATSCs though? Because they got all this shit sticking out yeah, of them. Are those like random blasters? Or I'm not sure what they are. Spikes. They do have a bunch of spikes coming off of them. I don't know why. Um, it kind of reminds me though with the paint and everything of the Mandalorian ATSC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A little right? bit. And is it just is it just like. Uh, to scare them, or yeah, just like they've 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 painted them and sort of decorated them because to make sure that they look different for the confrontation. I, sure, I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, it looks, it looked weird. I just I noticed the spikes before in the other picture. I was like, there's something weird about that. But the other thing that you can see in here um, in the trench down below is that there are some stormtroopers um, that have removed their helmets. And so the question is, uh, and I, I'm not sure if this is addressed at this point in the script, but the, the question is, are, are there some that have sort of like flipped sides or whatever? Are they, are they uh, some that have joined the resistance? Are you oh, trying to, yeah, yeah. Are you I see, to yeah, zoom yeah, in yeah, on I see it? up top there. Like yeah. look on the right, there's a couple, you see them? Yeah. Well, so, in one of the um, 
write-ups in there, it says that some of the people that Finn talks to are disgruntled stormtroopers. So it could, yeah, yeah, that's a borrowed theme that we'll we'll get to in a few minutes. Actually, it's not too far away. I don't think we better get to it pretty soon because no, our quick talk is turning into something. We're, we're more than halfway at least. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so moving along then. Welcome um, to the John and Eric Tangent Podcast. So we get what looks like a uh, celebration scene, I guess. So you see a bunch of the modified, painted ATSTs along with the gorilla walkers. Um, there's a bunch of people with their arms in the air. It looks like they're celebrating, right? So they had a victory on uh, Coruscant, and they they must have fought the First Order off there. Of course, the First Order is much bigger than an occupation on Coruscant, but yub nub and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, nub, yep, nub. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so so they won a victory uh, led by uh, Tico Rose and uh, Rose Tico and Toes Rico. <laughs> Toes Rico. <laughs> he comes hanging out around Cinco de Mayo. Uh, Rose Tico and Finn. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back on Mortis, we see what looks like Ray and Kylo having a duel. Uh, again, this is metaphorically connecting back to that Mortis story arc, son and daughter kind of thing. Um, and, and then we get to see a little bit of how um, Kylo looks in this. You'll notice his face mask is different. And I think uh, maybe mm-hmm. because he shattered his helmet, you know, in, in Rise, they had him put it back to get. No, sorry. They had a chimpanzee put it back together using an ancient Japanese style of pottery repair. I, I'm not sure where it was going exactly. He was a, Japan, <laughs> he was a chimpanzee. Chimpanzee. Yeah, nice. You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he has a completely different mask in this. It looks something like a Mandalorian mask, maybe. It's, it's different uh, anyway. So he built himself a new mask. And and that may just as well symbolize his sort of conversion to the dark side, and he's different now than the Kylo of old that threw temper tantrums and smashed his helmet. Right. Um, next thing we get is, uh, or next uh, piece of art we get is uh, something a little weird. Actually, C three PO and R two D two. Yeah, so C three PO is leaning over R two D two, R two D two, and it's sort of like an emotional thing because R two D two is all. Sc- scoured and scorched and he has no lights on at all he's oh, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got his head blown up yeah he's obviously destroyed at this point and from the script you see that he gets zapped uh somehow whatever gets damaged and then what the uh uh chewbacca puts him on his back straps him on his back which he did for c-3po yeah so it's, it's again another callback but it's a different kind of callback and he and this is the point where uh, i mentioned at the beginning of the episode Trevor said he didn't yeah, Trevor said i didn't or... kill r2 right so so, yeah. so he gets blasted here but, but you know what? nothing nothing but r2 gets yeah. like blown up every five seconds yeah he does well you have that yeah exactly <laughs> um but so you know, this is again. It's echoing. In the three- first movie, he gets blown up when he's coming down. C three people are like R two, and looks like he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that's exactly where he was headed with this. So he said, by the end of the movie, he'd be all fixed up. But so it's just another thing where he gets broken, and because these two droids at least are humans, and there is no you'll you'll notice there is no do in this. Uh, BB eight's introduced. You can't do anything about it. But there isn't another yeah. one. Uh, that serves no purpose. Which is good. But you go back to the original two, and um, you know when when R two D two gets blown up, uh, Chewie's going to save him. He puts him on his back, just yeah. like he did with three PO. It's his buddy. Yep. And then three PO shows something of an emotion in this picture. He's leaning over, like, "Oh my God, R two, you're blown up. You're my friend, right?" And we saw that again echoed in the Rise, but in a completely different way. When he's when when three PO is saying to the to the group, you know, I'm oh, say goodbye one to my last friends. look at my friends, yeah. right? Yeah. So another borrowed element, but done in a completely different way, and in a way that I think Trevorrow's idea is probably better. It would have been, <laughs> you know, because he three PO doesn't have any good reason to be deep friends with Poe or uh, not even really Ray, right? You know, but yeah, R two D two whole friends line. Not to mention the whole he can read Sith, but not Sith. We can get into that in another <laughs> discussion. Yeah, but I mean, R2-D2... why a six year old Anakin actually put that program in him? R two D two has been with him from the beginning. If anybody would have a bond, it's those two. 
I mean, despite their fighting, they have a real bond. They've yeah. been together forever, right? And they're always together. So yeah. that the two of them having that interaction makes a lot more sense than three PO doing it with Poe and Zori Bliss Ryan. and Dio yeah. and whoever the fuck else was in that room. Yeah. <clears throat> um so yeah. So uh next thing we get is Luke conf- looks badass. Yeah, this is really badass. So Luke confronts Kylo and the reason this looks badass is Luke has no saber. And what we see in this picture is that Luke is holding Kylo's lightsaber with his bare hand. And he is just fucking looking at him. Which, either A, is he actually a force ghost in this, right? Maybe. Or B, well, that's his robot hand too, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, the right right one. hand, yeah, yeah. So it could just be that. You just, you know, but look at him though; he does have a blue yeah. glow around his hair and his shoulders. You see it? He does. Yeah. So it, yeah, he could definitely be a force ghost. So here, and he's stopping the blade, which would make much more sense than well. So what happens in the in the script? Any other time, the blade would cut right through it. Yeah. yeah. So what happens in the script though is that Luke is a force ghost at this point. But he's essentially haunting Kylo. He's nice. giving him shit, you know. He's giving him shit all the time, and like, and, and it's and it's 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 making Kylo isolate himself and feel like he's crazy. And mm, you know I like what I this. mean, yeah. right? It's a really cool concept. So I think this scene happens after that point that Luke is the Force Ghost, and at sure. some point Kylo is gonna like, yo, oh, fuck you! I'm gonna cut you down, Force Ghost. And then to bring the metaphysical in, just like they did in The Rise, sure. where, where Force Go, uh, even in TLJ, I guess, yeah. where a Force Ghost can interact with the real world, even though it hasn't been a thing up to this point, he's going to catch Kylo Saber, and you know he's going to say to him, and this is in the script, "You are no Skywalker." Yeah. <clears throat> right, and Which so would be really cool. It would. It would. I think that would have been really neat to see. There is a. Uh, What's the Japanese uh, self, uh, self hero suicide hero, um, uh, uh, yes sep- seppuku, uh, seppuku uh, se- something like that? I can't remember what it's called. Sudoku. <laughs> Sudoku. Yeah. <laughs> it's se- seppuku. I, I should just look it up. Um, I know because it was on the shit that I read earlier too, and I can't remember it. But anyway, uh, yes, seppuku. Uh, seppuku. Seppuku. So that is where uh, someone honorably kills themselves because there is no, you know, there's no better action, I guess, to do, right? You just, so uh, in this, um, Hux, <coughs> Hux is going to be defeated and he has a collection of lightsabers, I guess from Jedi they've killed, but I don't understand quite how that works. Yeah, well, I mean, they don't sure, really but then there's it. also like, even after Order 66, Within the comics and shit that are canon, there were Jedi that were on the fringes that could have been hunted down later. But Hux would have had lightsabers from them? I just don't get that part. I don't fucking know. Well, okay, so anyway, there is symbology here and there is a callback here. So anyway, he's killing himself because he knows, in essence, the First Order has lost already at this point. Yeah, he's not going to give them the honor of killing him. He's going to take his own life. exactly. But the second thing is. is the lightsaber that he commits suicide with is purple. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> You've only seen one of those. Yeah. And the, there's no question about who that's a callback to. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What window was he thrown out of? Was he above Coruscant? <laughs> uh, it, was, it was over a city. Of course not, right? Yeah. And since they run Coruscant, wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah. it would. It would. It would. Ta-da! So, yeah, so I bet it was Mace Windu's lightsaber yeah, that it was is, supposed it to is. be. All right, so uh, next scene we get is, uh, and I think this is the last one out of the group. It is. Um, and it's, so it shows Leia, who is not a Force ghost, as far as I can tell in this picture, <laughs> but, um, with BB-8. And this is, again, a callback, but a different one. So where she's giving a message to BB-8 um, to spread across the galaxy uh, but I think in this scene, because it's the final one in the group, this would have been the victory message, right? Like, sure, could have been, yeah. But yeah. like you said, it very nicely mirrors her scene in A New Hope. Well, I think um, just like they did in Rise, where they took scenes out of the 
OT and PT and sort of closed them out, right? So you had um, Luke began his journey as a Jedi under the uh, Rising Sons of Tatooine. And then um, in the prequel trilogy, Anakin, of course, begins his journey under the Rising Sons of Tatooine. And then Rey's final scene is under the Setting Sons of Tatooine, yeah. right? And so that's a closure thing. But I think you could do it the same way here because in A New Hope... Um, Leia is sending out a message of desperation through R2-D2. And then now she would be sending out a message of victory through BB-8. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. It would be a way to sort of close out that resistance rebel line of we've been fighting forever against this I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, That's good. I like that. So so it would be not an ending to the Skywalker saga per se, but an ending to the whole resistance rebel arc yeah, you know the whole the whole. It's not an arc; it's a wave. But <laughs> you know, an ending to the whole thing, and, and and it starts where it began, but not chronologically. In their world, chronologically in our world. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, yeah, it does, and it would have been really cool. Um, with that being the last image, um, what do you think of Trevorrow's script? And when you finally get to our website, and we actually post it check out the pictures and the script and whatever and let us know what you think it could have been um i guess maybe what you would have preferred i i don't know what you would have liked to have seen come out of that um yeah now even still though going forward now where do you go from here with star wars in general i am really hoping they go backwards three thousand plus years and do a trilogy with revan and malik and do, be cool. do that whole storyline. Um, but what what we've heard rumor-wise is that they may go forward in time to a whole new era. It wouldn't be bad, but here's the thing for me. Again, and I wasn't expecting to feel this way leading into Rise of Skywalker. With the way they ended it with Rey, kind of being a great Jedi or whatever, um, I wouldn't mind... But I think all these actors are just done. They're like, the the fandom is too toxic. We, just, we don't want nothing to do with it. I wouldn't mind seeing what else becomes of Ray. You know, uh, I would have liked a completely different story, too. But being what it is, I wouldn't mind seeing what happens with Ray later on. Um, maybe searching out other Jedi, kind of doing what Luke failed to do, essentially. I don't know. Uh, who knows? But. All right, so let us know what you guys think of the Trevorrow script uh, for Duel of the Fates. I like it. There's a lot in there that I would have preferred over what we got. Eh, but it is what it is, you know? And there's a few things I think would have been equally stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, sometime, there is a universe where this script came to fruition, fruition and uh, ta-da. <laughs> They're going, I wonder what would have happened. Yeah. But yeah, so let us know what you guys think. Uh, hit us up, whatifgeeks.com, whatifgeeks at gmail.com, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that happy shit. Uh, hit, really, seriously, hit us up. Let us know what else you want to talk about. Uh, January's been a slow month. We're kind of rolling into getting the crew back together after everybody being gone for work and this and that, whatever. So 2020 is off to a little bit of a slow start, but we want to kind of pick it up. And get all four of us in the studio kind of hanging out and talking about some fun shit. So let us know what you want to talk about. We will talk to you guys soon. Good night, Tony. Good night, Colin.